the yellow one is done. This is a blue car that we did actually from last week. We went from supercharger to a turbo. He bought a used kit. It has a wheel bearing that's been making a noise for a while. And we've just fit him in between jobs. This is actually a friend of ours, but we still got to kind of keep it on the schedule. One car at a time. That car gets 100% attention when it leaves. The next car comes in. We just finished that car. So unfortunately the bearings he provided are not wheel bearings. These are diff bearings. He also wants the offset bushings installing. It brought us these arms, but he's, uh, the ones that are on the car are better than these. So these are offset. So what this does, it pulls the arm in. So as you see, this hole is in the center of this piece right here by being offset by one way or another, you can essentially pull the whole arm in and get a little bit more negative camber. Uh, this is the socket that he sent with it. This is so you can put it basically on here to press this out. We'll put this in our press. And this is essentially the base. This is an inch and three quarters. We have a few dies, which essentially does the same thing, but this is definitely good for the DIY guy that might not have those pieces. And that sits like that. It's amazing actually how many of these we get. People yes. that just say, hey, we appreciate what you guys show us and share things. That's him in this car. Wow, mm -hmm. these look cool, polished. They do, They're right? The V3s, the first time I've seen those polished, that was really good. And then he um, did our airbox mod. He's showing you he did it, and he's like thankful for all the stuff that you put up on YouTube, and he actually sent you pictures. Isn't that cool? That is awesome. We try and show the rosy parts of things on our channel. We don't show you the doom and gloom where things suck and we send three boxes to someone and they all get lost. <laughs> and we keep trying to do the right thing. Yes. And the people who get it by mistake won't answer Estra's nice letter and mail it back. They just keep it. No, but you know what? It, it might come back. Yeah, I, things I kind of balance out. People. I have faith. So the bearing is here. This is what it looks like. Quite a bit bigger than the diff bearings. But of course, if you don't do this stuff all the time, you're not going to know. You just uh, grab it. It looks like a bearing. Well, I figured from that little uplifting letter, I figured we would kind of share this with you. I'm going to show you how to do this. And I think this comes from a DIY that Henry bought the parts. Sounds good in the background. So you're going to need this socket right here. This is the right size to press those bushings out. That sounds really good. I've got to get one of those things in the background. In fact, I do have one. I just dislike it. I don't use it. So this socket is the right size to push that bushing out. <laughs> it's so great. I don't think it's coming loose, buddy. And then, of course, the larger socket is the base. This is holding the outside from moving. Basically, putting pressure on the outside. So basically, what you're doing is supporting this with a larger socket and pushing in with the thinner socket. That's what pushes that out. You can see that mark right there where the bushing starts and the housing is separate to the bushing. It's like a metal sleeve. That is the part you're pushing out. It can be a pain and you're gonna need a press to do this. This is always like a jack in the box for adults. This thing. So I gotta show you this thing. We got this tool out. Harbor Freight, and it's actually really good. We've pulled out a million ball joints. Our other one at one point broke, and we needed it in a hurry, and of course Harbor Freight has it. So what this does, as you see, as you wind this down, it basically squeezes the two parts together, and it's basically pushing the ball joint out. You gotta make sure the nut is on the end of the thread, so that it doesn't damage the thread. Put the nut level with the thread, and you're basically just gonna crank this until it pops it out. So here's the rear knuckle right here. Can't really feel it, can you? Feel it a little bit. I mean, there's definitely a bunch of crud on it. You know, some recent stuff come out of it. Yeah. Sometimes when you put it on the vise and you turn it, you can feel it. A little bit grindy. But it doesn't feel real smooth. It doesn't feel noisy. So this is the hub. It's pressed in there with the bearing around the hub and the bearing is basically here 
So when you do this, always pay attention to which way the bearing goes in. It does make a difference. Always take a few pictures before you get involved in it. All right, so the box just came back. The box I was talking about, this has been a headache for us. So this is a complete shifter kit with a few other things, which the parts are in short supply, plus they're kind of expensive. We sent the box out. The address was incorrect and it went to his old address and the old address was supposed to forward to the new address and it didn't. We called USPS. We've tried to track this thing down. They couldn't find it. We're upset about it, but it's like, well, we can't just refund him because it needs the parts. So I said, you know what? Let's just try and make things right. Send him a whole new box and we'll fingers crossed something happens with that one. Well, the new box, two of the numbers got switched on the address. So that one got lost too. Esther spent a ton of time chasing this, uh, going through the address. I'm not going to show you it. But in the end, she sent a letter to this address and just said, please, if you receive this box in error, please send it back. Just put return to sender. We are a small business. We're trying to do the right thing. And I said, you know, this is good luck. It's not going to happen. Well, they sent it back. It just came back today. And the box that we switched the numbers on, that one just came back yesterday. So setting this thing up in the press, sometimes it's not as straightforward as it looks. The shiny socket is the base. The black one is basically the part that is pushing the bushing out. Well, you see the direction that this comes out. Sometimes you got to spin things the other way around. So the outside is going to be pushing on the silver socket and the inside is going to be pushing on the black socket. So you can spin that whole control arm around so it will fit in your press. So it's a quick demonstration just the way I did it, hopefully. It helps, gives you an idea which way it's going to push out. So there's one done. Then we'll do this one. You also got to be quick too because you have to freeze these to make them small enough to go in. And they warm up pretty quick. So, And then once we have them all in, we have some set screws here that we'll drill and tap the back of this and put that set screw in. All right, so there's both arms bushings installed. We've effectively shortened the upper control arm to add more negative camber to tuck in the really wide TE37 wheels. I believe they're a 10 inch wide wheel, which is quite a bit on the front of one of these cars with stock fenders, which this car has stock fenders. I believe they are trimmed and rolled slightly, but it's still a stock fender. So that is definitely a lot of wheel for this car. So this is gonna make it tuck in there real nice. All right, so there's the first hole drilled and tapped. You wanna make sure you go through the metal and into the Delrin slightly so that it has a spot to lock into.